Hi, I'm Fred Dillon, and I'm going to be discussing graphing quadratics and cubics. A quadratic function is expressed as an equation with y equal x raised to the second power, or squared, and which may have an x term called a linear term and a constant added. Generally, this is written as the formula you can see here, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers. Another format, called the graphing format, is y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. The key is that the highest degree in the equation is 2 and that no fractional or negative exponents are used. I'm going to show several examples of quadratic functions and explain why they're quadratic. First we have y equal 3x squared minus 4x plus 2, which is just putting in numbers for the formula we saw. You may have something like this, where y equals negative x squared. In this case, a is actually negative 1, and the linear and constant term are not needed. This expression shows us radicals for coefficients and decimals, but that's okay because those are part of the coefficients. Here we have the graphing form, which looks slightly different but still has a degree 2, and it is okay to move the constant over with the y term. These are things that are not quadratic functions. Here we have x squared in the denominator. Here we have y squared, which makes this a relation and not a function. Here we have a radical in the linear term, and here we have 2 thirds, which is a fractional exponent. Quadratic functions are used to model the paths of projectiles, the path of arcing water, and in many other applications. At this point, you should have a graphing calculator available so you can follow along with me. We are going to use the graph y equals x squared plus 1, which I put into the y equal register. Using the standard window, this is the graph I get, and you can use a table to look at values. Key properties of the graph are whether the parabola opens up or down, whether there is a maximum or minimum point, these are called extrema, and where, if ever, the graph crosses the x-axis. It is not necessary for a quadratic to cross the x-axis. Note, all arcs are not parabolas. Many curves resemble a parabola, but do not have its special properties. This is the graph of the hyperbolic cosine of x. It looks like a parabola, but it is not. It is used in the arch in St. Louis and has other applications with bridge building. We can change the direction of the parabola by looking at things that multiply it. This is the graph of x squared, which is our parent function. When I have y equal negative 1 times x squared, I do a reflection over the x-axis. That a term, negative 1, is causing a reflection. We can find extrema in this case by going through several steps on the calculator. I'm using y equal x squared plus 3x plus 4, which gives me this graph, and we are going to use the keystroke sequence shown to find the minimum. We hit second, trace, and go to number 3, which says minimum, and then hit enter. On this picture, you see that it's asking for a left bound. You can put this in. I'm using negative 3. At this point on the picture, you see a little triangle above negative 3, which indicates that's our left bound, and the calculator is asking for a right bound. I am going to input 0. You'll then be asked for a guess, which you can disregard and hit enter, and you get the minimum value. The x value is listed as negative 1.5000003. Those are not significant digits. The program that finds the minimum adds some rounding error in. The true minimum value of the function is the y value, not the x value, and that is 1.75. We can do the same thing to find a maximum. We're going to use this equation, negative x squared plus 3x plus 4, which results in this graph. Once again, I hit second, trace, and go to maximum this time, which is number 4. Again, I am prompted for a left and a right bound. You can see the triangles there, which indicate where I have bounded, and I end up with 1.5 for the x value and a maximum value of 6.25. To find the roots of a parabola, we once again are going to start with an equation and a graph. Once again, we are looking at where we cross the x-axis or the x-intercepts. On second trace, we go to number 2, which says 0. As we've seen before, the prompt asks us to give a left bound. You nearly need to pick something that is to the left. Then I need to find a right bound or something to the right of that maximum. 
Then it gives me my value at 1, negative 1, 0. 0 is the y value because I'm at the x-intercept. To find the other root, I go back to second trace and press 0. This time my right bound will be further over. And I get that my value is at 4. You can factor the polynomial. Here you can see I used x squared minus 4x minus 12. And factoring gives me 6 or negative 2. You can also use the quadratic formula. Here I'm using y equal 2x squared minus 4x minus 13. I set this equal to 0 because that's the value I'm solving for. The formula is x equal the quantity, negative b, plus or minus the square root of the quantity, b squared minus 4ac. This entire quantity is divided by the product, 2a. In this case, the equation has a equal 2, b equal negative 4, and c equal negative 13. This gives us the following result, where x can be either 3.739 or negative 1.739. We can also change the steepness of the parabola by using a number whose absolute value is between 0 and 1. When we're talking about the a value, we generally refer to the absolute value. On the previous slide, 2 was a number bigger than 1, but for steepness being occurred, we talk about the absolute value of the number being greater than 1, causing more steepness. In this case, with 1 half, we would say the absolute value of a is between 0 and 1, and we can see in this picture that it causes a flatter parabola. Adding a constant moves the parabola up or down. Our parent function, x squared, is the medium colored parabola that is centered at 0, 0. By adding 5, x squared plus 5, we get the dotted parabola, which is moved up to 0, 5 for its vertex. And with x squared minus 3, the vertex has changed to 0, negative 3. The general form of the quadratic, once again, is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. All graphs of this type will be the family of parabolas. They will just be translated. A is the coefficient that indicates whether the parabola opens up or down and how steeply the parabola opens. And C is the constant that moves the parabola up or down. So we can have a translation up, down, left, or right, and we can have a transformation that's going to make it steeper or less steep. The graphing form of a quadratic is similar. You'll notice here that instead of y equals x squared, I have y equals the quantity x minus 2 squared. This has moved the vertex to 2, 0. Many students feel that this should be at negative 2 for the vertex. To consider what's happening, we have a transformation. Think about x minus 2 equal to 0, and solve that, and you get x equals 2. This means that what was at 0 is now at 2, so you have moved 2 units to the right. Another example, we have y equals the quantity x minus 2 squared plus 1. You can see my minimum now is at 2, 1, so the vertex has moved. It has moved two units to the right and up one unit. Other examples of this, y equals the quantity x plus 3 squared plus 1. I've moved three units to the left and up one. In this example, the opposite of x minus 3 squared plus 1 has reflected over the x-axis and has moved three units to the right and up one. Finally, the opposite of x plus 3 squared minus 1 still reflected over the x-axis, has moved 3 units to the left and down 1. The graphing form of the parabola is y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. a, once again, is the coefficient that indicates whether the parabola opens up or down and how steeply the parabola opens. c is not here. We now have h and k. h and k are constants that indicate a translation of the parabola from the origin. The vertex is now at hk. This is the general form of a cubic. Notice bx squared plus cx plus d is actually the quadratic we looked at before. We have now added the ax cubed term. The same restrictions apply as to whether we have constants and different types of exponents. Cubic functions have very different graphs from parabolas. In this example, you can see the x squared, which we worked with before, and the x cubed, which now enters from the third quadrant and it leaves from the first. It does not have that symmetry around the y-axis. The family of quadratic graphs always have symmetry around an axis in the middle. These graphs of cubics will not. They sometimes have a rotational symmetry at the origin for this family. There are different forms of graphs of cubics may take, and they're always going to have something rather like an S-shape, and they will always cross the axis one or three times. 
This is the graph of x cubed. You can see somewhat the s-shaped and going through 0, 0. By multiplying by a negative, as we did with x squared, we can see the resulting graph is reflected over the x-axis, as we would expect. We also can add constants to the n, and as before, they translate the graph up or down, depending on what's added. This graph has all of the cubic, linear, and constant terms, and you can see now we have three different roots. This one enters from the left in quadrant 3 and leaves from quadrant 1. When I put a negative coefficient with a, it changes the graph so it enters from the positive and leaves from the negative. This is the change that that a coefficient will create. To find a root for a cubic equation graphically, we are going to start with this equation and this window so that you may follow along. This is the graph that we'll get. We go to second, trace, and go to zero again, and we get the familiar prompt asking for a left bound. I'm going to put in one for my left bound. Then with the prompt for my right bound, I'm going to put in three, and I get the result that the zero is at 1.60258. We have looked at how to graph a quadratic, how to find its roots and its extrema. We've looked at the family of quadratics and how they all have a similar arcing shape. We have looked at cubics and the similar shapes that family has of an S shape and one or three roots. And we've seen different forms that happen when we change parameters of the graph 